Um, this is our first uh, Instagram live of Ask Evelyn in uh, honor of Where Does It Go Wednesdays. We've been posting some information and some tips on how to sort every Wednesday. And we're trying to come and do something a little different and bring something to you live. So bear with us. We're new to this. <laughs> but it's we got a couple questions for you. All right. So uh, I'm Becca Fong, and I do solid waste outreach for Seattle Public Utilities. So sometimes I'm here to tell people what to do with their recycling compost and garbage. And I'm joined with uh, Pat Kaufman, who will introduce himself, also goes by Pat Recycles on Instagram. Go for it, Pat. I am. I'm Pat Recycles. Thank you for having me today. This is really fun. I work for Seattle Public Utilities. I'm the Commercial Recycling and Composting Program Manager for Seattle Public Utilities. Uh, we're a lot of businesses, helping businesses get their recycling and composting set up. And uh, right now, during this current time we're in, it's a, this is a great uh, activity to undertake while we're not able to do as much outreach directly with businesses out in the field. So happy to be here and to talk about recycling uh, more with Becca today. Awesome. So you guys may be wondering why we're calling it Ask Evelyn. Uh, for those of you who've been around for a while, way back in the late 90s, I think we you're... had these had some some very fun uh, cartoon characters, one of which who was Evelyn the Envelope, because y'all used to send stuff to us in the mail in envelopes, and she would answer your questions. So in the spirit of Evelyn and providing advice and answers, we are here as Evelyn. So we've got a couple of questions that have come in from folks who write into us. And if you guys have questions, please write into us at askevelyn at seattle.gov, or you're welcome to put your questions in the comments as well. Um, but Pat's going to kick us off. We, Evelyn has been around for a long time and we've got a lot of questions. As we're all spending a lot more time at home, we have more opportunities to really sit down and think about like that thing that I have, where's it going to go? So in the spirit of that, we've got a couple of questions for you. So Pat, you've got a question that came in. We Evelyn. did. We had a question from um, Sarah in Columbia City. She asked about clear plastics. Which clear plastics are recyclable in Seattle? And what about the numbers? Uh, the, the number that is inside the little triangle that uh, has, has a number inside. And what we want to talk about was, you know, the different types of plastics and how we um, try and guide customers to use their recycle bin, the recycle cart at home uh, appropriately. So let me just grab a couple of examples here. Here's one. It's a uh, I don't know if you can see that there's a little arrow there, a little chasing arrow. It says PET, number one. Uh, in Seattle, we don't really concern ourselves with the number inside the triangle, right, Becca, as much as we do about the plastic. Yeah, but we used to, and I think that's why a lot of people had thought about those numbers. They think, oh, man, that's printed on the bottom of everything. I should just use that as a guide, right? So, Pat, why don't we do it by the numbers? Because I know that we used to. Well, we used to. I mean, when recycling first started back in the late 1980s in Seattle, when we launched the curbside recycling program in 1988, um, the program was focused on plastics number one and plastics number two, and that was it. And it had to be a, a bottle with a neck or a, you know, a, a jug or a jar, <laughs> all those old terminologies. And as, as packaging progressed, really in the grocery store and in consumer product packaging, there's a great many number of products out there that are packaged uh, using plastic. And a lot of those things are recyclable. So we started talking about what's a rigid plastic clean, empty, dry, rigid plastic containers. And, uh, you know, it can be anything from a, one of the baked good containers that you might get your um, little croissants or something in, or salad containers. Um, now it has to be clean, and we'll get back to that. But, um, but the idea is that there's a lot of different shapes and sizes of plastic. It's not just number one number two. Polypropylene is number five. Polystyrene is number six. Those also come in plastic form that you, know, you might find your, uh, you know, peanut containers as a polypropylene or a polystyrene or a polyethylene. So it really doesn't matter what type of plastic is. Let the recycling facility figure out the different grades of plastic. We really just want people to provide empty, clean and dry plastic containers. Okay. Um, that makes sense. So we're not asking people to be chemists here and get right. super nerdy, though. You know, I mean, I think both of us are pretty, pretty nerdy as far as recycling goes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not important to look at the numbers and it's really more important to look at the shapes, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions we get at the Ask Evelyn at Seattle.gov question uh, about where does it go? And 
a lot of times it's about the kinds of plastic, which I don't have examples of here handy, but about like the kind of plastic that comes around like when you buy some batteries and it's called, they call it in the, in the biz, they call it a blister pack, which is like a wrapped plastic item that has been sandwiched with some cardboard and you, know, you might buy a remote control or a, a lot of electronics, small electronics come in these blister pack uh, things that are sort of shrunk around the item. So it's just the right size. Those are not the plastics we're after. We're mostly after your food, beverage, soap, basically grocery store aisle type rigid plastic containers. So those are, those are, that's one guide for our general plastics. Okay. Um, so maybe you can look at, you showed us a couple of examples of different kinds of mm -hmm. plastics that are good, kind of like always let's, let's look at what like we should always be recycling, right? We can get yeah. way, I can get super caught up in the details. I'm like, what about this little plastic thing? This might be recyclable, right? And maybe we shouldn't be doing that. Maybe we should be looking at like, these are the things you should really focus on and make sure all of those get into your recycle bin first before I get all crazy and yeah. look at the tiny stuff. Okay. Yeah, the basic. I mean, I think that's, and that's been a challenge, you know, recently with uh, the, the markets, uh, the international markets. A lot of people talk about the, the plastics in China and how the markets have really shut down and how things are really different in the recycling world right now because, Recycling industry really relies on the uh, the commodity of the plastic. Can we find a market for it? Is there a buyer for the plastic? So sometimes our messaging uh, focuses on just going back to the basics, which is okay. bottles and cans, you know, uh, jugs and tubs. So obviously the classic milk jug is all is definitely re recyclable. We got one as well. We got our props. We're ready for the show. We're good with us. And caps on is okay in this space. Um, okay. So what about yeah yeah go for it i was just gonna say the cap we get a lot of questions about caps too caps and lids size of lids different caps um for any plastic container that you have like a water bottle or you know uh soda pop those kinds of things that come in plastic bottles and these jugs when it's a plastic container with a plastic cap you can empty clean and dry your container and then put your cap back on for recycling and i always like okay. to collapse things a little bit Provides a little more room in my recycle cart and also in the recycle truck if you don't have this um, full size. So you can you can crush things a little bit. Um, if you want to go you want to go all in and be like the the champion recycler, you can help the recycling industry by taking a, la a label off. You, you remember back in the '80s that was a big push, like removing labels. You know, it was because they were focused on the commodity. They were focused on the sure. value. In order to get recycling going back then in order to make recycling work, you had to create a commodity that the buyers actually valued. And these labels are not valuable in that commodity okay. marketplace. So, you know, if you can, if you can take the time to just go ahead and peel a label off now and then, it definitely helps the big picture. If everybody did it, it'd be great. Okay, but not necessary, like- Not necessary you know, though, not required. Not necessary, okay, cool. All right, what's another container we should definitely make sure that we put in? Okay, well, definitely to put it, you know, like I said, bottles. Um, this is exactly a bottle. This is a, a container eh, of sorts. Close enough. <laughs> but yeah, once again, plastic lid. Now, in this situation, this container is a PET uh, number one. Doesn't really matter what the numbers are, but I just say say what it is. Um, <laughs> it's hard to take the nerd out. <laughs> it you is, know. you know. Got to check it out. Um, <laughs> so, plastic containers like this, bottles. Um, you know, tubs, containers like this. These are all fully recyclable. This was, a, you know, for peanuts. And so it had some residue in the bottom, some, some, some dust from the peanut shells. And I just had to do a quick rinse and then set it upside down in the dish rack or nearby. And it evaporates in no time, these, this little bit of water. Um, for this one, you, can, you, would put the, you could put the lid back on. Lids on are okay, plastic, plastic, that's okay. On the other hand, if this was a glass container by chance, and this cap, this lid, was um, attached to the glass peanut jar, then you wouldn't put the lid back on. You don't want to put plastic or metal back on. You just have to make sure that it's three inches. Let me get my, and is it three inches? It is close. I can't tell you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, two and three quarters. So this is not, so in this situation, this is two and three quarters inches in diameter. So it would be okay lid on. It's more of a cap, it's not a lid. Lids are big, <laughs> caps are small. Okay, I'm nerding out on this, but basically, yeah. We're with you, Pat, we're this totally with you. This one stays on. And so I hear 
third, the reason that we have this three inch rule doesn't matter if it, whatever material it is, if it's plastic, if it's glass or it's metal, um, it needs to be over three inches. Cause I heard that there's a gap in the machinery sure. that sorts the recyclables. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great uh, way to explain it that um, in a recycling facility, you know, uh, we're talking about some mechanical sorting means where you've got magnets pulling up the metal, the metal materials, and you have uh, actual staff members doing physical sorting of materials. You have other mechanisms that are kind of pushing the big materials up and letting the small materials fall through and such. So the guide we give to our customers is if it's three inches in diameter or larger, then it can go into the recycle bin alone. Okay. If it's cool. smaller than that, if it's not a plastic on plastic, then it's 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 waste. It's garbage. Okay. It's just because we can't capture it in the process. Yeah. It just falls through and then they sweep it up with a giant loader and they end up treating it as trash. It's just too much That's work right. to sort it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, one more thing you mentioned. So a lot of this stuff. So I got a milk jug. Right. You know, I cleaned. There's a little bit of residue in there. A yogurt container, right? I to have that clean so we, you know we've been talking to people about empty clean and dry a lot right and so it's always been a little funky because we love our jargon and we're super nerdy and we're like it's a contaminant it makes stuff disgusting it makes commodities not as valuable can you break it down for me in like super basic terms like it's got to be clean yeah there shouldn't be any food in the recycling right. ever shouldn't be right. any liquid in the recycling that's so. right it shouldn't um and so we also have a couple different categories of recycling and that is uh you know at home for all of us who are recycling at home uh the goal is to empty clean and dry and so i have a couple props here um this is not empty <laughs> um, those are good they are i'm like i'm gonna eat those, those later. but uh, those my house. the salad that came with that um this also is not clean enough you know this okay. this would require a rinse and uh, and then to dry it out as well. Um, a little bit of residue though, I don't really have a residue situation, but you know, a little bit of moisture or liquid in a container is not the end of the world. If it's not a gravy or sauce or something like that, that that's residue from, you know, that's residual from the food. A little bit of moisture from after you rinse it out, that's, that's gonna be okay. A lot of things okay. evaporate right in your recycle bin under the sink or wherever you have your recycling in your kitchen or wherever you have it in your house. Chances are you just give something a quick rinse, maybe upside down a couple shakes into the you know kitchen recycle bin and it will evaporate before it gets to the cart. And then it might evaporate in there too before it gets to the truck. So it's not like we're asking people to dry the ends with a towel or you know, dish rack them for hours on end. <laughs> It's right. really, don't over, you know, don't freak out about it. It's just like, if it's clean, then you've really made all the, the okay. moves you, you should make. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So I think that makes a lot of sense. So food is mainly, you don't want it to get moldy on other things, right? And then the right. liquid is really for the paper because you don't want to ruin the fiber in the paper. Right. Those are really the two things. So right. no food, no liquids, a little bit of moisture, a little bit of residue is okay, but like empty out the burrito before you probably oh, yeah. go. Right that's why I have, this is a prop this is this is just you know we got all the salad out of this that we could eat for sure but look at all that stuff and nobody wants that you know no no recycling commodity broker wants to see that broker wants to see that in the plastics they don't want to see food stuff plus the, the food stuffs in the plastic um or in any commodity it creates a lot of pests you know it creates a lot of problems so right. um, rinsing it out is not just you know, our guidelines, it's, it's for the recyclability of the plastic as well as the commodity broker value uh, situation. Sure. So Pat, we did have a question come in. Um, is that what about recycling on the go? We're not, you know, I got, I don't know about yeah. anybody else, but I don't got a lot of places I'm going right now, but yeah, I was, <laughs> that's what I was kind of talking about. I you agree. Know, and I, we're, that's what I was, but, it's complicated, right? Like, so when you're on the go, like, what about if you have, you know, I'm, I'm drinking a drink. I got a can of soda. I'm drinking some of it. There's a little bit left in it. I've got, you know, those are, what do we call, what we call our public place litter cans, right? We've got our blue can for recycling and then we've got a garbage can. Like, what am I supposed to do there? Well, okay. So that's like a you know, food court or uh, right. at school or, you know, when you're on the go, like you say, um, the public place litter cans um, and any, like front of house or uh, public area, food court area collection cans, 
those are the ones where, you know, we, we want the commodity at the recycle center to be super clean and valuable. So we're asking everybody at home to do this empty, clean and dry. Um, when you're on the go and you're done with your bottle of soda or chocolate milk, even say, you know, um, really want it to be empty. So, so make sure you okay. drink all the product you bought, ideally, you know, consume everything that was made and produced. <laughs> Good point. I mean, from a big footprint perspective, we want to, as consumers, you know, take in everything you have, have purchased. Yep. Um, but so empty, if, if you have a little bit of product left in the bottle or container or the cup that you don't want to consume, then you just pour that out in the garbage. You just pour it out uh, separately so that when you put it in the recycling, it is an empty container. The okay. clean and dry part won't be achievable fully. But even like coffee, if you just have drip coffee, even if you have a little cream in it or something, once you take the last slurp of coffee out of the cup, once the evaporation occurs, you're talking about just a little bit of residue of, of coffee product, much less of a concern really than the ink is on the paper fiber for the recycling industry. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not that it has to be perfectly clean um, in order to be accepted, but if it's a frappuccino or milkshake, then, then maybe not. You know, it's okay to throw something away as well. I mean, if it's, if it's really dirty, like even dirtier than my, my sample here, um, and you're on the go, and you know this is not going to meet this guideline of empty, clean, then maybe just throw it away. Okay. Like, you know, I, I had half a burrito, and I ate as much of it as I possibly could, and I'm probably not going to be able to haul it around with me for eight hours until I can put it in a refrigerator. It's probably better for me to take that to-go container with half my burrito in it and put it in the trash. Yeah. Instead. Well, put the burrito in the compost if I can. That's right. And if there's a compost, I was just going to say. In the trash. Okay. If, if it's a three bin system, then hopefully there'll be a compost bin as well available. But uh, yeah, you know, be, yeah, that's what okay. you have to do. You have to just decide sometimes it's okay to throw some things away. One of our, one of our good friends, Socorro, she's told us, you know, remember to tell customers it's okay to throw things away. And I totally embrace that. Totally. I think that's a really good thing to remember. So I'm kind of looking at our time and I think we covered a lot of ground here. I'm gonna give a really quick recap. So for plastic stuff, don't look at the numbers even, well, you can look at the numbers because Pat and I are gonna nerd out and look at the numbers, but that's not how you should be recycling. You should look at the, the containers. So bottles, jugs, um, trays, yep. trays. Those are the things that we should really be yep. recycling. Um, instead of looking at the number, you wanna make sure that it's empty, no food, clean, you know, pretty much no food and dry. So no liquid, no like half of a soda bottle and like half of your drink in there, or, you know, if you've rinsed it out, that's totally fine, a little bit of residue. So empty, clean, and dry. Look at the container size. Um, caps, they need to be bigger than three inches. Right. Um, to play it super safe, I always tell people I use my hand, though, you know, oh, I've got kind of a gigantic yeah. hand. So, you know, but that's a good way to make sure that you're you're getting the right size. Or if you're like Pat and you yeah, roll with a tape measure, tape measure. Do that yeah. You know, um, and then if you want to, if you do have smaller caps, I think plastic caps on plastic containers, totally okay. Right? All right. That's a pretty good recap. That's a good recap on the caps. All right. 